Hello everybody, my name is Christian Quick and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about actually coding the entity in Minecraft. And um, I already showed how to make one in Blockbench, but now we are going to take those three files and we're going to code them in the game. And then we're going to implement those three files in here, that way they can be implemented into the Minecraft game. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to make is we're going to make the folders. So we're going to new package and then we are going to need to call one called entity. Uh-oh, already one existive entity. Oh, this is because I made the block entity, isn't it? Yeah, mod block entities. I totally forgot that I did this. That is perfectly fine. So on top of this entity, we're going to be making a couple new folders. So one we're going to call new package and one we're going to call for the client. While the other one we're going to call, so this is where you would put like all your actual like entities. So E-N-T-I-T -T, entities. So this would be all your individual main files. And then we're going, so how we have mod block entities here, we're just going to make, uh, we're just going to call this uh, mod entities. It could be mod or mob, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it as mod though. Uh, so in your clients and your entities, so in your, actually let's refactor and let's just call this enti, enti, just call it entity. So we have an entity in an entity folder. That might be a little confusing, but uh, in the in this folder, because there's different kinds of entities, obviously, because there's block entities. So in our regular entity folder, we're going to make the big class. This is going to be basically the everything. So let's call the f uh, f -l -u -f -f -u floofers entity. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to say, what kind of mob do I want? So if I say extend, ooh, extend. OK, let's look at a uh, host, hostile entity. Uh, and then I come into here. Uh, let's see if I can find the. Okay, let's cry. Let's go into external libraries, and uh, let's go where it starts as a yarn. One, two, three. Go up here. Net uh, entity, because I want to show you the different types of entities that are in here. All right. Well, in the class, there are some like Angerable is a, an interface that gets used. <laughs> I don't know what angriness is. That's a very interesting one concept uh but you got flying entity you should have hostile entity you have mob entity there should also be creature did i did i go over creature it seems i can't find all of the passive ones so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and force it so let's look up like the the sh uh sheep entity and then here it's called animal entity uh animal ambient entity that's a, a different kind <laughs> Um, but you have to know what you're trying to copy. So the best thing I would do is basically what I just did. I want to copy a cow, look up the, uh, the cow entity, and then be like, what kind of entity is it? If I want to make something that's dangerous, let's say like the, the zom, zombie and, uh, entity, and then it's probably called monster or hostile, which is, uh, there it is, implements monster. There it is. So you have to know like what kind of it is. If I look up the uh, G H A S T entity, it should be called a flying entity because it moves around like that. So you have to know what kind of entity you want, and then you can go from there. Um, either way, you're gonna have to do a lot of finicking around. So let's call. Let, I want to call the. Uh, I <laughs> completely lost my entity. Uh, the floofers entity, and this is going to extend hostile entity. Sure. And then the most important thing is implements a uh, geo entity. And it's going to say, hey, you're missing some stuff. Let's implement the methods. And each one is going to have a very special one. Uh, so if I have like an animal, there's a special code for like this thing called get child. Um, that is very important. Uh, constructor matching super perfect. So we can just put this up to here. Uh, safe livers to dictionary. There we go. So if I spell it wrong, I'll know. <laughs> The first thing that I would actually put on top of this, uh, let's do uh, private uh, an animate a bull instance catch. And then we're going to call for a factory. So that means we're going to be making a factory in a second. Uh, equals new. And then we're going to do singleton animatable instance catch. And then this, we're going to say this. 
and then over here we're going to hit that. And that is important. Now, right now we don't have that factory up, but we're going to have to get to it eventually at some point. So something that is also very important, let's take a look since we're copying a, uh, let's, so let's look at the zombie entity. Uh, there is uh, these initial goals and initial custom goals, it seems. I'm just gonna do like initial goals because that seems more important. And then there should be this thing called attributes. Let me see if I can find it. Let's see if we can search uh, max uh, health. Okay, so it is not in here. <laughs> let's let's add it manually then. I, I, I've done this many times before. So let's do uh, public static. Oop, I don't like how that's got like two spaces on it. And then this one is going to be the default attribute container dot builder. And then here we're gonna call this set attribute Buttes. This is going to be uh, its health, its attack, its uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, let's return, uh, and then we're going to call the uh, hostile entity dot create uh, hostile attributes, and then from here we could do dot add, and then we can say entity attributes dot uh, generic max health is one. And then we could basically, so how much health do I want it to have? The health is talking about per, how many half a hearts do I want it? So if I say one, it'll be one half a heart. If I say two, it'll be one full heart, two half hearts. Uh, this is a bird, so it's not gonna have that much. So if I say 10, that'll be five full hearts. I think that is definitely reasonable. Uh, if I um, control D, and then we get rid of that. There we go. So uh, let's uh, control D a couple times. So one, two, three, four. And then let's kind of go over the rest of them. So we have max health. We're going to have generic attack damage. So the attack damage is basically uh, how much, if it's hurting me, uh, how much damage will it do? So let's say one half base damage or four, so two hearts. And then we're going to go through. So here we also have like a knock attack knockback. And then here we'll just say we'll just say one. Um, say attack attack speed. So how fast is this uh, attacking? We could just put this at a generic one. Um, I I don't think the speed actually like messes with anything too much. Uh, then we're going to need a movement speed. So how fast is this thing? We could probably. Uh, we could be ridiculous. <laughs> Let's say two. How fast does a zombie zombie move? Oh wait, I don't have them in here. Never mind. <laughs> uh, that is perfectly fine. And then the oop, and then the last one would be like it's called follow range, I believe. Yeah, follow range. This would be like how far away can the entity see you uh, before it like catches on? So I know those are very variable throughout uh, a lot of the code. And then we have this thing called initial goals. Initial goals is, uh, what is it trying to do? Is it trying to destroy an egg? Is it trying to look in entities? Is it trying to look around just regularly? And then here we have a priority. The number one thing it looks is, it's going to destroy an egg before it thinks to look at an entity. It's gonna destroy an egg before it looks around. And looking around at an entity or just looking around in general is 50-50, so. The first thing that we can do is we can just copy this, control C, and then we can put uh, on our initial goals, control V. And uh, right now, um, zombie, <laughs> um, we'll just get rid of this one. And then what basically do I want it to do? The first one that I always add first is this dot, let's say goal selector dot, and then we would do add, and then it needs a priority. So let's say zero and then we'll do new, and then there is, here we can see all of the goals. The one that I always have, number one, is usually your swim goal, and I would say this. So the number one thing that this thing is gonna try and do is if it's in water, it's going to swim. I don't think a lot of hostile entities has this, and they just kind of just drop in the bottom, and zombies turn into drowned and stuff like that. Uh, another one that I like to put around, so we'll control D, and instead of a new swim goal, we're going to say that the priority is one. So the number one thing it's going to try and do is swim. If it's not swimming, let's say uh, wander. So we have, a, uh, so here we're just gonna say uh, wander around goal. 
uh, let's do the far one. So the thing is, this actually requires a little bit more. So let's say uh, zero dot uh, seven five. I think this is the speed. Yeah, and then the other one is the probability. So we'll just say one, <laughs> because we're gonna we're gonna meet probability with priority. Um, you don't always have to do that. It's just something that I like to do. We're gonna set the look around goal. We're gonna delete it from there. And we're going to put it over here. And the reason I'm putting it on top here is because I'm going to try and label them in priority order. That way I, th I I know, like, what is it trying to do? It would rather, it's going to try and rather walk around than look around. Look at entity goal. Uh, so this one, uh, actually, this is perfectly fine the way we copied it. So this was going to look for specifically the player. Uh, this isn't going to concurrently attack. We're going to have to add that. Uh, so we have the goal selector. Let's say that this is going to be three. This is going to be four. We're going to have to add one called attack goal. And then th it's going to have to have some sort of target. So we could just say uh, what is attacking, the, the mob that is attacking. And we are going to have this mob attack. And then it needs to have something that it is attacking. So let's move this to, uh, let's keep this the same priority. And actually, let's move these to one. So if it it'll wander around if it doesn't have something to attack. If this thing is attacking, and what is it attacking exactly? Uh, well, this is actually going to have to be called uh, active. Uh, it's called active target goal. A C T I, active target goal. And so here we're going to leave this one blank. But unless it tells us to put it in, but we're going to do this, and then we're going to call the player entity uh, dot class. Uh, and then we're going to save this to true, tr, true. So notice how this was saying, hey, you got to fill something in here. It's because it wanted the player entity. It got the player entity. It got what it wanted because it wants to know what it's attacking. It's attacking the player. And then here we could say um, there's another thing that we can do set. Yeah, there it is. Set max time without max, uh, max visibility. And you probably set like 300. Nothing too extreme. Um, I, I don't really know how exactly to describe this. It's, it kind of is what it says, max time without visibility. So basically, it's going to keep attacking the player, but if it can't see you, we can get rid of this initial custom goals, by the way. I don't know why that was there. If it can't see you, it'll, it'll try and stop attacking if it can't see you for the 300 ticks. So that would be 10 seconds, something like that. 15, I think, actually. All right, so now that the initial goals are done, we are going to put in a, uh, a new method called private. We're going to make a predicate. So play state, this is for the uh, animations uh, to call in between the animations. So let's call this uh, predicate. And then we're going to call for animation state, animation state. And then let's bring up, uh, let's say uh, if, then we can say the animation state is uh moving dot is running uh i think it's calling the wrong animation state let me see if i say like hold on is moving and then it says it's wrong i'm gonna do something a little odd i'm gonna try and force it to uh call the right class software dot bernie dot um dot gecko lib dot core dot animation animation state dot oop, dot is moving there we go <laughs> there there's the is moving uh why is that can i get rid of it no okay i don't know why it's doing that so right now for now let's just kind of keep that in there uh Glad I knew that that was the class it's taking it from. All right, animation state dot, and then um, this one's going to be called get controller. There we go, get controller, and we're going to do dot set animation, and then this is going to be the raw animation uh, dot begin, and then dot then, and this is where we're going to start calling in the animation. So here uh, it would be like animation dot our whatever our entity is called so this one is called the floofers dot and then this one would be the um walk i usually keep it singular but if you put it at walking then you can put it at walking 
uh, and then we're going to need to put in the loop type. Uh, this is just this one's really easy. So this would be animation dot and then loop type dot uh, and then loop. <laughs> really, really simple. And um, oh, oh, and we're going to have to return it. So return um, play state dot continue. I almost forgot that little thing on there. And then outside the if statement, if it is not walking, um, then it's holding still. And if it's holding still, it's idle. So that is the other animation that we did make. So animation state dot get controller dot set animation. And then here we're going to have the raw animation dot begin dot uh, then. And then here is the other animation. So basically just like how we did before, this would be the animation dot floofers dot. And then this would be idle. Meaning like holding still, not doing anything away from keyboard. <laughs> And then we're gonna have to set the animation type. This one is really easy. Animation dot loop type dot loop. And then we're gonna have to make a return statement for this. So return at play states dot continue. Real easy stuff. And now this predicate is uh, so we made a predicate, but we're not being call it, uh, calling it. So that is what these controller is going to do. And we can do that by. Um, controller registrar dot add and then we have a new uh, animation controller uh, I don't like how it has these on it so we're just gonna get rid of those uh, then we're gonna do this dot oh not dot comma and we're gonna have to call it controller controller and then we're gonna do a little comma zero com oh, comma and then we're gonna do this uh, predicate because that we, we are now calling it uh, perfectly just like that. Now there is your, uh, your thing. So remember how I said the, that we added this factory up here, we're going to need to call the factory in this little, uh, animatable catch. We can do that by simply just saying return. And instead of saying null, we're just going to say factory. So that is that. And then after this, we would have to put in all of its sounds. If I go into the zombie entity, there's gotta be the sound files in here. There we go. Uh, ambient, hurt, death, step, and play step. So we're just going to copy all of these, control C, and then we're just going to paste them in here. And suddenly, look at that, uh, it just worked ch like a charm. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what, a, what a giga chad it does that. Now that all of these sounds are in, uh, it's going to currently sound like a zombie. But uh, before we worry about the sounds, let's make it actually attack because right now it's got attack damage and it's got initial goals, but it's got nothing telling it to uh, actually attack. And uh, we could probably put this uh, probably in between here. It, it, it probably won't hurt anything. Uh, so um, actually, let's see if there is a try attack in here. Control F, try, uh, try attack. Perfect. This is what we want. Control C, uh, Control V, and so uh, here now we have attack. It's going to basically look at the player and it's going to hit it. But I want to do something a little bit more interesting. That basically every time it hits, remember how we made that death somnia effect? Uh, if you just want to not have that and you just want it to hit, keep this the way it is. I'm gonna have it so that every time it hits you, it gives you death somnia. So let's say the uh, living entity, living entity, and then we're going to have this equal get uh, target. And then we're going to have to call for the living entity. So for this, we could do um, uh, living entity dot add status effect status uh, new status effects instance. Uh, and then here we're going to do custom effects dot desomnia. And then this should make it so that when it attacks us, we ha now get the death somni effect. Also, I forgot that we could add a duration. So let's uh, let's give it a, like a really high duration. So let's like 64 and then just something really high. <laughs> we do 64,000. Uh, and then uh, and then a level it. This really doesn't matter. So we'll keep this at zero because it'll be level one. Uh, we'll say false, false, meaning will it produce particles? And then uh, will it show the icon 
true. We wanted to show the icon, not the particles, and is it ambient, true or false? Um, I'm not too sure what that does. So we are going to come back here when we do the um, the entity stuff. So for now, let's, uh, for the, this whole step sound and all this stuff, we're going to do these last. Um, let's make the other part of the entity, because as you can see, we've now made this entity, but it's not really being called anywhere, because it still needs to be remodeled according to the code and then re sort of textured. It just needs to know where to get them from in the soft code where the, all this stuff is. So we're going to have to hard code that in our client. We're going to have to call that through your model and renderer. Now, personally, I always like to make the model, or, uh, the model first. So let's call the, um, the entity we have. So we're going to call this the uh, fluff, fluffers mod, uh, model. And then this is going to have to extend the G, uh, geo model. And then this is going to have to call what kind of model is this? And it's going to be the fluffers, uh, not the, the model, the, the entity like that. And we're going to have to throw some classes in here, implement those methods, stick them in here. And a lot of these things are pointing to null. That is going to be an issue. We need it to uh, point. So for this, uh, making sure that everything is good, uh, we're going to have to do uh, new, oh, new, new identifier. And then we're going to have to call the mod because that's just what we normally do. Uh, hmh3.modid, and then we would do, normally it's called a name, but in this case it's going to be called path. Um, so this is going to be, where am I grabbing it from down here, really, in like the textures? Because it's grabbing it from the models, and we actually have a model, but we're going to make a new folder, and we're going to call it geo. And then we're going to do slash, and then the model that we got it from. And I believe our model name is the um, uh, full fluffers dot, dot geo dot json. That was the last thing that I imported. And then for the heck of it, we're just going to copy uh, this and we're going to paste it in both of these. Um, just like that. So that is the model where it's getting it from. Where is it grabbing its texture from? So we are not going to grab it from, we're going to actually put this in our textures file instead of making a new one. And then we're going to call, uh, we're going to make a new file in textures though called entity. And then inside of that, we are going to just put the, uh, f uh, the fluffers and we don't need to do that, uh, the .geo, but it'll be fluffers.json. And then in the animation, where is it pulling the animation from? We're going to be making a new class, or not a new class, a new um, folder, and it's going to be called animations uh, slash, and then, then we're going to have the fluffers dot, and it's not going to be um, geo, it's going to be animation dot JSON. So that was pretty easy, and then we still have the renderer. So pretty easy stuff. We're going to do new Java class. And then this is going to be the full uh, fluffers render renderer. And then this is going to extends uh, uh, geo entity. Oh, not well, yes, geo entity, but geo entity renderer specifically. We're going to put up these bracket bars and then put up the entity specifically. So this would be the fluffers, uh, fluffers entity, just like how we did with the other one. And then it's going to say, hey, there's some missing files that you need to implement constructor matchings. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Drives me nuts when it does this. All right. Contractor matching, super. I mean, technically we already have the, the thing, but we're just going to reinitialize this. So let's say um, public identifier and normally we would say uh the when we say new identifier we you'd usually say the the mod and the mod id but this is the method so we're going to say uh get texture location and then we're going to call the entity so we're going to call this the fluffers entity and then we'll call this in ins instance in which that instance is going to simply be uh, return new, and this is when we get to identifier, call the mod, dot mod ID, and then this would be basically the name, 
but since Geo decided to call it Path, we're going to call it Path. So, uh, well, I'm talking about the the black and the black text that says Path. Um, so uh, textures uh, slash entity slash, and then this is where we're going to call the uh, fluffers dot png. I just realized that when we put in the textures I said dot json, this is going to be a png as well. So instantly right off the bat, that would have been an issue, but I got it. <laughs> I got it this time. Dot png, close that up. Uh, technically, these should have at overrides on them. And then we're going to have another one that's an at override. At override. This is going to be the last method for this. Public. And then we're going to have the render layer. And then we're going to have the get render type. And then um, we'll call this the, the entity that we have. So this would be the fluffers entity. Um, and then we'll call this the animatesable uh, identifier the text. Sure. And then we're going to call for an at nullable. And this is going to be the vertex consumer provider. And then this would be for a uh, buffer source. Let's zoom out so we can see it, what's going on. Buffer source float uh, partial P A R T I A L partial tick. And then inside of this is where we're actually calling the, the code, which is a lot simpler than that. Return dot uh, return super dot, and then it's going to should just call everything. So as soon as I start typing, uh, it should give me a little thing to just call everything. So I just kind of hit enter, put a little thing there, and you don't have to type it all again. So now we have an entity, but it's not being registered by the game. So we're going to have to make the mod entities. And this is where we are going to have to call that. So this isn't too bad, but I mean, messing with this stuff is uh, messing with this class file. I, I, I've had to play with this for a long time, especially when making new types of entities. This causes me a lot of problems sometimes. All right, and then we have to register the, um, the entity uh, so that is registered through the game. We've made tons of registries. So public, static, final. Uh, and then here we're going to make an ent uh, entity type with a T on it. And this is going to be the fluffers entity. And then we're going to call the registry name. So let's call this the fluffers. And then we're going to equal. This will be the reg. Here's the registry part. So registry with a T on it dot register registries. Wait, plural. Uh, a dot, and then the type that we're doing. This time we are doing a uh, entity type, and then we're going to do new identifier, and then this is where we call the HMH three dot mod ID, and then normally we would have the name, and the name would be uh, the name of our thing, which is uh, f uh, fluffers, and then normally we would put like little, uh, like we would end the code here, but before, like once before, we had mentioned that this is not, this is in fact not where the code ends, so. We are going to comma, and then we are going to put on to the next line. This is going to add uh, the fabric a block entity. Oh no, not block entity type builder. Fabric entity type builder dot create, and from here we are going to need inside of uh, our create. Uh, we're going to need a spawn group. We can do creature is fine. That way it still spawns like a creature even though it is a hostile mob so it'll spawn during the day uh, like on land and stuff like that and then we're going to have a um the fluffers and en um entity and then colon colon new and then this whole thing says it's wrong but that is perfectly fine if we do dot dimensions uh <laughs> suddenly everything is fixed let's put this on a new line all right, so in our dimensions, this is basically the size of the hitbox of the entity. So uh, ent uh, entity dimensions uh, dot fixed, and then here we could do, uh, let's just say 1.0, 1.0. I would recommend, these are floats, is by the way. Uh, I would recommend uh, look at the entity in the world and then and then set the hitbox. So after, on the outside, so second to last one, we're going to do dot 
build and then put a little um, semicolon at the end and then everything should be fine. What is the problem here? It asked me to make something public. I'm guessing something I accidentally made private needed to be public. That should be fine. So when it comes down to the, uh, so now this is being called, remember how we have these attributes? So they're not being set. We had to make this. And so the, a way that we can easily set this is we would have to go, let's go in our util page with the um, class with the registries on it. And we can make a new one at the, uh, the bottom. And this one would be, let's say, uh, a private static void. And then this would be register attributes. And then inside of here, we are going to need to call the fabric default attribute registry dot register. Uh, and then here we got to have, what do we call it? Mob entities? Mod or mob? I think it's mod entities dot floofers. And then we're going to have to call the uh, the class. Uh, so let's call the floofer uh, floofers entity dot set attributes. And then we could simply and just easily put this at the top. So we're just going to call in the set register uh, oh <laughs> register attributes. All right. So that should be everything with. The mod complete, I may be wrong. Uh, I usually am wrong, but we'll, we're just going to now try and fill in all the empty spaces in here. So the first thing that we're going to add is our new directory, and we're going to call this animations. And inside of our animations, and just like before, we grabbed this before. So remember how I said you want to make sure that these are saved into one file drag this into here, refactor it, and it is now in here. It has the idle, and it also has the walk animation. I would make sure, so animation fluffers.walk, animation fluffers.idle. So if we go back into our entity, make sure that those are the same. Animation fluffers walk, animations fluffer idle, and so it looks, well, they're backwards, but it's not going to hurt anything. Those classes are in there, so they should be working just fine. The next class that we are going to be making is a new directory called geo. And inside of this, oh, we're not copying it. This is where we are going to want to put our uh, fluffers geo.json. So we're going to refactor, put that in there, and then it's got all of these body pieces that we have made. So this is basically the model of the thing, so it knows what the model is supposed to look like. And with our blank model, we're going to need to throw a texture onto it. So inside of our textures file, let's add a brand new directory called entity. And then inside of entity, we're going to, well, actually, we can just throw the thing in here. So here is our fluffers entity. We're just going to throw it in here, refactor. Here is our entity. And uh, let's just load the world right now, because the, the world at this point should be loadable without having anything crash. And then if everything is good, then we're going to start adding some more stuff onto the entity uh, before we call it a day. Uh, day, here is the moment of truth, slash, summon. Uh, and then here we added our Geeko Labs, so now they're all in here, but we have our HMH3 fluffers. Oh, it crashed. Ah, oh, no. I don't think this would be the cause. So in Entity, we're going to make a new directory, and we're going to call this uh, Floofers. Uh, this would be more like if you have variations, you can do this. And if we're doing this, then we have to go into our model and renderer, and we're going to have to add a uh, uh, floofers slash floofers.png, and we're going to have to do the same thing to the renderer. Why don't I just copy this? Because that's control C. I accidentally added another one. Uh, so let's control V. Oh, no, I copied the oh. <laughs> fluffers slash 
Okay, so that is in there now. Uh, the fluffers renderer is not being put in. That is an issue. Uh, is the model being called? I wonder if I need to put it in the client and I'm just forgetting to do that. <laughs> All right, so let's go into the client and then let's add, uh, let's go down here. Um, entity renderer. registry dot register and then we're gonna have to put in the entity type that we made so um, mod entities dot fluffers and then we're gonna have to call in the uh, what is it like uh, fluffers entity colon colon new oh I'm silly this is for the client and the client is render layer render so it's going to obviously be the fl uh, fluffers renderer i oh, come on <laughs> come on don't don't do this to me all right so this is telling me that there is a problem in the renderer and the renderer although it was working it's got the model but i didn't call for the new uh and this would be for the model so if i have that and i come back into the client nope it still tells me that something is wrong maybe because it thought I was having the model. Hold on, let's have it just be the manager. Okay, and that that seemed to have done it. <laughs> so it's got the manager anyways, and then it wanted the model. So I just took the model out of the thing and called for a new model anyways. And it seems like that fixed the issue. Um, so that the model's working. Let me make sure that the actual model is being, okay, the model is being called properly. Or at least somewhere. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. All right, so we're going to keep this world the way it is. We're going to create a new world, creative, and we're going to do this every time because if it crashes every time, sometimes it gets a little stuck where, like, sometimes the code works, but if I try and load the, wor the world, I think it's trying to, like, it, like, has saved broken code and then just, like, won't open the world despite it, like, working now. So, I mean, if there's another issue, so it does some weird stuff. So let's try and do this again, see if it crashes or not, slash summon. And uh, this always makes me <laughs> really nervous. Uh, entity fluffer, oh my goodness, there we go. Oh, and it makes zombie sounds, uh, terrible. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know what, I kind of like it. <laughs> this thing is crazy. Let me go in survival. Oh my goodness, this thing is gonna beat me up. It's gonna kill me. <laughs> this thing is everywhere. This thing is absolute crack. Uh, so I did get the death sound, the effect every time he hits me, it should reset uh, every time. Um, so now that it is working, his model is in there. Let's control our F3B. So his model is a little bit larger. So let's set them to uh, 0 0.5 uh, on each, I think. Um, actually, I could probably say his thing could go down to 75 while um, the sides could be 50. All right, let's open up the floofers entity real quick. Uh, let's take, uh, first thing I want to do is that speed at 2. Let's say, uh, let's just keep it at, let's say one. Let's let's cut it in, in half. Uh, we could always do zero dot whatever. Um, I'm almost tempted to, to turn it down even more. Let's just keep it at one and see how fast that is. Uh, in mod entities, this is where it fits the, the, the width and the height. So I'm gonna say the, the height could be zero dot, and then we'll say seven five. And then for this, we're going to do 0 0.5 and hopefully that will be a better shape so on top of all that let's also make some more uh, extra stuff in like including um some extra things that you may want to have so right now uh it was way too uh vigorous for me to even try and kill it but you can actually add let's go into uh not this let's go in our data uh and ours in our loot tables and here we only have blocks here we can add a new directory and this one is going to be called entities, I believe. Uh, and then in here, we would have to call um, basically fluffers.json. Uh, 
And then I'm going to be cheap about it. We're going to go into here. Uh, I'm not going to even open up the other thing. Data, Minecraft, loot tables, uh, entities, and then let's just... Uh, Bat doesn't drop anything. B doesn't drop anything. Blaze. Uh, cats only drop string, right? That's only one thing. Perfect, perfect. So let's uh, let's control, control C. And then uh, let's, uh, now that we've copied that, control V. So now this thing will drop string. So actually, I think it would make sense for this to drop a feather. Uh, it doesn't drop any meat, um, but so that is something that we can now check and make sure that it is dropping a feather. Um, in a previous video, we had a, uh, I made sounds. Um, so I'm gonna add sound files to this thing. Uh, but first thing is first, if I'm gonna be adding sounds, I'm gonna have to open up the sound file. And if I'm making custom sounds for this uh, entity, uh, I have to call what each one is doing. So uh, let's take a look at the floofer entity for a moment. And let's just, uh, I know it's not gonna work, but um, we're just gonna copy this. And we're gonna copy it in here. Uh, let's get rid of these uh, rides. I just wanna see what they all are. All right, and so basically we have, let's control D, and then here we're gonna have, uh, so instead of sound, we're gonna, well, we'll call it uh, N to T, and then this one is gonna be called um, ambient, ambient. Uh, it's going to have a hurt sound, going to have a death sound and it's also going to have a step sound uh, play step sound comes from step sound so there's literally no reason to have that so these are the sounds that uh, come with an entity so let's rename all of these all right and this these are all technically going to be all single sounds so if you want to know how to make sounds and stuff like that we're all going to have to make um if you're talking about like the whole registry um we, there's a whole special video for that so let's we have our sounds to add and then we're going to have our sounds file to to go through so we can kind of start at the top with the subtitle and stuff like that so let's uh come down here and this one is going to be called entity and then this is what we're going to be doing. So uh, let's leave this blank and then let's take these out. Um, control C, uh, control V, control V, control V. So we have entity and then this one's going to be ambient ENT hurt death step and so when it is uh you know uh based on the sounds idle um uh so we have floofer sounds floofer hertz fl uh floofer <laughs> dies and lastly floofer walks and then let's add in the sound files that i personally have so uh, from the so from the last sound file that I have, we have this special special guestly folder. So let's open it up, and um, I need to drag all of these in there. So we have, as you can tell, <laughs> probably a, a ton of sounds that are to be added. All right, so all the official sounds that are in here now are uh, going to be regular. I'm going to add three extra mod sound types. And they're going to be put under single sounds. Um, the reason I'm adding them is just extra stuff. So it, you, they are completely downloadable by the GitHub that I have. So I'm going to be adding one called um, Blem uh, Snap. And last one, Rain Drop. So we're going to were to add these as well it, it so they're not going to have anything to do with the new uh the new mo mob but they are going to be in here to just uh just as extra sounds <laughs> snap is a true single sound there isn't any variance to it so i just wanted to point that out that i'm going to be adding these three under single sound it has nothing to do with the mod or the mob or the mod technically um but i'm just going to put them in there 
All right, so now they are in. If I actually go through all the 94-something sounds that we made, uh, I did register in there. So once again, thanks to Twix Dog for coming over and uh, recording these sounds with me. I had a great time. So now that these sounds are in here, we're going to need to call them under what I call them in here. So let's go back to the entity, and here we are going to be calling them mod sounds. And then here we for this one, this is going to be the ambient. So here we're going to call entity, entity ambient. Uh, for this one, this is going to be mod sounds, and then this is going to be dot, and then this is going to be entity hurt. Uh, this one is going to be mod sounds, and then this is going to be uh, entity death. And then lastly, this is going to be mod sounds dot entity step. So uh, the pitch and volume, uh, we could probably keep the volume at, we'll, we'll say 1-1. One, one. And we'll just see how that just goes from there. So now it's got its new sounds. It has a new thing. And so from here, we're going to let's let's reload the world. <laughs> we didn't have to run the data gen for anything. So um, and let's uh, anything from here should be just kind of just tweaking anything you specifically want. I mean, this is really just the very basics of a, a mod. It's got the model. It's got the the texture, the animations, it has its own loot table, it has its own attributes that we've covered, it has, uh, it's has, it got this, that, and the other thing. There's so much that go into an entity, and literally, I mean, all it is is just a new way to drop an item or give you a new thing. All right, look at that. That sounds terrifying. I'm gonna turn my my volume up on my thing. Oh my goodness! <laughs> its ambient sound is pretty good. When it starts walking, it makes me cringe. <laughs> I'm gonna let it kill me. Ah, which reminds me, player. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Player was slain by entity dot hmates three dot floofers. We can fix this. So in our lang, we would have to call for control D, and then we would have to do and oh, entity uh, hmh three, and then here we would call floofers, and then here we would call it floofers. Oh, jeez, that's terrifying. I don't like that at all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Stop moving. Stop moving. No. I'm going to get this thing. I'm going to get this thing. All right, this isn't cheating. I now have the... Uh, I'm using the, the brick armor stuff, so... If I still manage to die... <laughs> It's so fast, though. That's my problem. And once it sees me... Oh, my goodness. Thank goodness, oh, I killed it. Oh, oh thank goodness, I killed it. <laughs> uh, we could probably turn the speed down even even slower. Um, I think the problem is the maximum is 1.0, and so that is the fastest an entity could move. And I set it to 2, and then I set it to 1. So I would probably set it to, like, I don't know, 0.5 or something. You can set it to whatever you want. This thing is... Um, uh, it listening to its scuttling, it, it doesn't even sound like chicken feet anymore. When we were recording, I was like, you know, this sounds like chicken feet. But hearing this thing snap around like that, it sounds like a, a scary spider. And then it's just moving at, like Mach 5, and I just, like, I, I can't even, like, swing at that pace. 
Uh, so now I have Desomnia, so now if I sleep, um, it will, it should kill me, so. Uh, if I have a bucket of milk, though, it'll, uh, it'll cure that. So that is going to be it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. And without further ado...